This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Drop shadows in After Effects aren't great by default, but you can make more natural looking shadows if you use more than one copy and play with their settings. The problem is you have to modify every drop shadow if you wanna change the way it looks. Expressions can help to control the direction of all the drop shadows at once, but the opacity, distance, and softness properties all need to have different values, which makes things a lot more complicated. And what if you wanna create a light source that casts shadows in a specific direction depending on the layer's position in relationship to the light? To do that, you pretty much have to use 3D lights and layers in After Effects, which works, but takes a while to render. But you don't have to think about any of that anymore because I've created a set of presets for applying natural looking shadows and lighting to any project in After Effects, and it's all really easy to control. If you haven't already, make sure you join the Jake in Motion Discord server. The link is down in the description. I'm in there all the time, come say hi. Now let's take a look at Shadowcaster. To start, let's just make a very simple object. We'll make a circle in the center of the composition about that size, and I'm gonna search for shadow caster, and you'll see that there are three different presets in this pack. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the first one that's just called shadow caster and apply it to my circle, and right away we get a nice looking shadow. Now you don't have to worry about anything over here in the effects stack other than this first instance. So I'm gonna deselect it, collapse everything else up, and then we'll go through the controls here. Under shadow controls, you're gonna see some very similar controls to the drop shadow effect. We can change the color, if maybe I wanna make this a little bit more blue, probably make that darker. We could change the opacity so that it's darker or lighter, the direction, the distance, all of this is very similar to the drop shadow effect. Softness as well. And then we have fall off and spread. And these two are unique to shadow caster. So if I increase the distance quite a bit, you're gonna notice that there's kind of like this stair steppiness to the shadow. And this is just because of the way that it's working with multiple drop shadows. Now, one way that we could fix this is by increasing the softness, or if you duplicate the drop shadows a few times, it's going to automatically implement them into this rig so I can just collapse these up again go back into here now and maybe turn the distance down a little and now you really don't see those segments now fall off is going to control how quickly the shadow falls off from the object so if you don't want any fall off turn that all the way down otherwise increase it a little bit so that we have this nice natural look Spread is going to control how soft the shadow is depending on how far away it is from the actual layer. So if I turn this distance up further and I turn the spread all the way down, you'll see that we have consistent softness all the way down this shadow shape. But if I increase the spread, it's going to make the furthest parts of the shadow softer. So those two controls are really useful and can help you shape very natural looking shadows. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this back down to defaults and maybe increase the distance a little bit. The next section is bevel controls, and Shadowcaster has a built-in bevel. If you enable the bevel with this checkbox, you'll see it shows up on the layer and it reacts to the angle of the shadow in the same way that you'd expect it to. So this is another way to just add a little bit more depth and realism to your shapes. You can increase the bevel thickness if you want to, increase the bevel intensity, or just turn it off if you don't want to see it at all. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine on. Now, you might be tempted to increase the distance a lot to get this long shadow look, and you could do that, but you'd probably have to duplicate the drop shadows a lot more. Now, if you don't need the extra controls of the softness and the fall off and the spread, then I don't really recommend Shadow Caster for this look. Instead, let me just remove all these effects. I have another preset called Faux 3D. If you apply that to the circle, it's gonna give you a very stylized long shadow look, or you could use it to make it look like it's adding some depth to your layer. Whatever you wanna do with it, this is probably a better solution for that long shadow look. I'm gonna go ahead and undo and get back to where we were with Shadow Caster, and let's just once again reset this back down to defaults. Again, I'll make this a little bit longer, and I wanna point out that if you rotate this layer, I know it doesn't look like it's rotating because it's a circle, but the shadow is not going to rotate with it. It's going to counteract any rotation from this layer or any parent layer. Same thing with the scale. If I scale it up or down, the shadow is not going to scale with it. It's going to naturally adjust based on the size of the layer, and this works for both vector and and raster layers. But if you ever apply it to a raster layer, let's say the After Effects logo here, and I just grab the Shadow Caster preset and apply it, you might run into the issue where the shadow does rotate and scale with the layer. You see how that's happening here. If I increase the distance, it'll be a little bit more obvious, but you can see that's rotating with the layer. If that ever happens to you, the easiest way to fix it is just click the reset button and it's going to automatically correct for that and now the shadow's always rotating in the direction it should. 
Or if you don't want to reset all of the shadow caster effects, go into this little admin panel, right click on this C value and reset it. This is going to put this point control value right in the center of the layer, which is what the expressions need to know what type of layer it's dealing with and how to control all of that extra stuff. It's just under the hood stuff that you don't need to worry about, but you should be aware of in case you ever need to fix it. You might wonder how you've been able to come up with things like complex presets and expressions rigs and After Effects. Well, let me tell you the secret. It's because I'm always curious and pushing myself to keep learning new things, which is exactly what Skillshare, this video's sponsor, is all about. You've probably already heard about Skillshare. It's the biggest online learning community for creative people with thousands of classes led by professionals across animation, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, you name it. Make 2024 the year you invest in yourself and your goals by starting a learning journey on Skillshare to take your career, skills, or side hustle to the next level. And if you're not sure where to start, Skillshare has curated learning paths to help you get from novice to pro in no time. Learning paths are hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order, with each class building on the one before it, reinforcing each lesson. They're available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced and a variety of categories including animation, design, productivity, creative freelancing, tools and software like After Effects and Blender, marketing, and lots more. Like this one with five classes from Derek Elliott that takes you through the process of building and animating 3D models with Blender. Blender is a software I'm actively learning and having a clear path on how to use the software to make professional looking renders is such a time saver. If it wasn't already obvious, I'm a huge fan of Skillshare and what it has to offer its members, and I think you should check it out for yourself. The first 500 people to use my link down in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so don't put off investing in yourself any longer. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now that we've taken a look at all the shadow controls for Shadowcaster, let's take a look at this global control layer option. This is where things can get really interesting. I'm gonna move my circle over here and let's just add another layer. I'll just type out some text and I'll say shadow caster and I'll put that over here and apply the preset to that layer as well. Now, if I wanted to change the direction of these shadows and have them look a little bit more consistent, I'm probably going to wanna first copy and paste over the shadow caster effect just so the settings match. I might need to duplicate the shadows a few times, but to change, say, the angle, I'm going to need to go into the shadow controls, change the angle there, and then I'll have to do the same thing over here. That's the same way you would have to do it if you were only using drop shadows, but I've set up Shadowcaster to be much more intelligent, and that's exactly what this global control layer is for. So if I make a new null object, or in my case, a void layer, this is a free tool from Battleax, by the way, void, it's so useful, go check it out definitely worth your time. But it's serving the same purpose as a null object. It's just a layer to apply things to, it won't render. And I'm going to grab the Shadowcaster Global Controls preset and apply it to it. And we have similar controls to what we saw on the Shadowcaster preset. But if I go into each one of these layers now and choose my global control layer to be that void layer, the shadow is going to immediately update. And what this layer is going to do is now override any of the shadow settings all at once for any layer that's using the shadow caster preset, which is really, really nice for managing these things and keeping all of your shadows consistent. So I can turn up the spread, I can increase the fall off, do whatever I want, and it's all going to update. And this also goes for the bevel control. So if I made the bevel thickness thicker or more intense, you're going to see that there. Let's make this text just a little bit dimmer so we can actually see that bevel. There you go, you can see it there and it is going to respect the direction of the global controls for the shadow. But where it gets even cooler is this checkbox right here that says use as light source. As soon as I check that on, the shadows for each individual layer are going to be responsive to the position of the global controls layer, essentially giving this a light source to cast the shadows from. And this can be done with as many layers in the composition that are using the shadow caster preset. This is one of my favorite features of Shadowcaster. It's really responsive, it feels very natural, and it's a lot of fun to play with. Now, when you're using global controls, whether it's using it as a light source or not, there is that one setting inside of each of these layers, distance offset, 
global only. This is letting you know that you have to be using global controls for this to take effect, but it essentially allows you to dial up the distance or dial it back. If you want the shadows to be shorter or longer to make them maybe appear like they're not quite so far off of the surface they're casting shadows on or extend them to make them seem even longer. So that's the local distance offset, but we also have that same distance offset property right here in the shadow caster global controls effect, which will globally affect the distance of all the shadows. Now, if I turn the use as light source back on and I move this layer up so that the shadow seem like they're going a little bit more down, they're gonna make the shadows much longer just because of the proximity to the global controls layer. So that's where you might wanna grab the distance offset and dial it back. But if you want that uniform shadow, then you're probably not gonna wanna use it as a light source and instead just set this to straight down, maybe 180 degrees, and I'll turn my distance offset back to zero. And now you can control the distance and have those shadows going straight down, regardless of where the position of this null object is. But there is one more feature of Shadowcaster and it's in another preset, it's called Light. If I deselect all of my layers and double click this preset, it's going to generate a shape layer with a gradient. And I'm going to go ahead and just change the blend mode straight to Add and it's going to have this nice bright radial gradient that's going to simulate a light source. I'll rename this layer Light. And if you parent it to any layer, it's going to automatically move to that layer. So I can parent this to any one of these shapes or the void controller, and it's going to just jump right to the position of that layer. Let me just rename this one circle and I'll call this one global controls. But now if I move this around, it's going to look like a light source that's moving around the scene. And if I pair this with use as light source, then it's going to look like a light source that's actually casting these shadows off of these different layers in my composition. It's a really, really nice effect. But even more than that, I could actually delete this global controls layer and use the light source as the global controls. If I bring that effect and stack it on top of the shadow caster light source effect, I can say use that as the light source and I can choose that as my layers global control layer. So I'll choose light here. I'll grab the circle and I'll choose light there. And now this single layer is not only going to act as a light source, but it's also going to change the direction of the shadows depending on where it is placed in the composition. You also have controls for the size of that light if you wanted to go out further or be much smaller. You can also increase or decrease the opacity and change the color. So maybe I wanna make this a little bit more warm. I could give it some yellow tint and that's going to update and behave however you want it to behave. Now, one issue that you might run into is if you say duplicate a layer, let me grab the circle and I'll duplicate it and move it over here. And you'll notice that it looks a little off. If I turn the light off, you'll see this a little bit more clearly. What's going on is that there's a CC composite effect added in right here. And there's this new option for top layer that was added to it recently, allowing you to choose which layer is being composited. Now, when I duplicated the layer, it remembered that it was set to this circle and it's not changing it to be the new instance of that circle. So you need to go into here and change it from that layer to the layer that it's actually applied to, and now it looks the way that it should. That's gonna happen if you duplicate a layer or if you were to say, copy all of the effects from this layer to another layer. So if you're confused why your layer's not looking correct, that's what's going on and that's how you can fix it. Now you can download Shadowcaster on my website, just follow the link in the description, and to install it, just unzip the FFX files, and then what I I like to do is go into my user presets folder. So under animation presets, there's user presets and you can select any of these, go up to this little menu here and say reveal in explorer or reveal in finder on a Mac and it's going to bring up the directory for these presets for that version of After Effects. And you just drag the FFX files into this folder, then come back to After Effects, click on that menu again and say refresh list. You don't even need to restart After Effects and then Shadowcaster will show up in your your presets list. The only other thing you need to be aware of is making sure that your project settings, if you click on this little rocket icon here and you go to the expressions tab, make sure you're using the JavaScript expressions engine, not legacy extend script. If you have it set to that, it's not going to work and you're not gonna have a good time. So just make sure it's set correctly and you can start using Shadowcaster right away.
And because I'm sure it's gonna come up in the comments, I am very aware of Shadow Studio from Plugin Everything. I love all of the tools that they make. Shadow Studio is an amazing shadow casting tool that actually uses ray tracing if you have a GPU. It does some amazing things really fast at really high quality, so go check that out if you need a super solid solution to creating shadows and lighting inside of After Effects. But if you do use Shadow Caster, be sure to tag me at Jake in Motion so I can see it and share it with everyone and come hang out with me in the Discord server. There's lots of amazing people in there and lots of really cool stuff happening. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.